right, let's uh, let's show you around InDesign and how to set up a drawing um, or any kind of file, sorry, a portfolio file in InDesign. When you open InDesign, you will see something like this. Obviously, you have some of my previous files I've worked on. You can just hit new, or you can obviously open um, the file you want. It might look slightly different for you depending on what kind of um, version you're using, but the principles are all the same, and you can always find the same stuff. Uh, anyway, so the first thing that opens up is um, the window which is asking you what kind of uh, file size or what, which allows you to set up the file that you will be working on. Um, and all of these things you can change later, but obviously you don't want to change your document size later because um, it would just rearrange stuff on your page, which is not always what you want. Uh, so here, for standard, it already offers you stuff that is um, pages which are standard sizes. However, um, if I want, so here I would want to s uh, set up something that is custom, which would be um, something that is uh, sized for screen. So first of all, I will change units here to pixels because I don't, I don't actually know how many millimeters the screen is, but I know that this um, that the screen I want to do is a hi uh, high definition screen, so I want to do 1920 by 1280. So. Um, you can set how many pages you want, whether the pages are facing or not. Uh, I'll do facing page now and I'll change it later. And you can select your start page and you can already select your how many. Uh, so if start page, you would use different number in case you're doing sections separately and you're putting it together. And let's say you're doing 20, first 20 pages in different document and then the start of this document would be page 21 for that. But don't worry about it, just set it to one. Um, so columns as well. Uh, by default you get one, which is like the whole paper space, but obviously there might be more if you want to set it uh, up, but you can do it later. Um, so margins are the page margins, which is... Uh, I'll show you how it looks now, I'll, I'll change it uh, once I've done it. And bleed and slug are for um, printing and that kind of options, uh, which you can set up if you are preparing documents or for stuff that goes over the... Um, on the paper size, basically. Uh, it, it affects how it will print, whether you want to print uh, full-size uh, pictures, if your printer supports that and some of that. But because I'm creating stuff to be presented digitally, I don't necessarily care about it right now. Um, okay, so I'll create 10 pages, um, which is size and pixels, and I'll create, click Create. Um, Alright, so what I have here um, is my document, which is now at the moment empty, and this is my page, so this is page number one, um, and I'll show you first around all the panels that you have in your uh, InDesign window. So first one, uh, on on the right hand side here, you have all your panels, which you can always drag and rearrange, and if you're missing something, you can go under window, um, and you can click which panels you might want to add or take away from here or view, um, and uh, is it somewhere? No, I think yeah, it's, it's on a window in, in this uh, particular software. So here, if I double click on the page 2, you will see that it opens page 2. Obviously now it's difficult to see because they're all empty. Um, and then you have all your other options for your uh, lines, your text, your paragraphs, which I will uh, show to you uh, shortly. Uh, the thing I want to, well actually, uh, to finish off the, yeah, to finish off what I'm, um, the panels. So if you here you have your tools, your toolbar. So there's selection tool, direct selection tool, some other, um, some other tools, um, which I will be using as I develop my document, and your rulers. Um, and then for each of those tools, for example, the select tool here, I have um, options on top. And if I, for example, draw a box. You will see that um, I can now see the the boxes, uh, x, y positions, and the width and the height. Uh, and I'm working here in pixels because, um, it, yeah, the the back since for pixels. So because I set it up in pixels, if I want to change it, or could, I can always change it. I'll show you how. Um, and some other options I can rotate it from here. Um, do other sort of like transform transformation tools, and I can change the uh, color of my box, uh, and I can change uh, the type of um, 
strobe has rounded and obviously change the width of it um, and do all these kind of things, which is very similar if you use uh, Illustrator or Photoshop. It's kind of th there are parallels and you will learn them as you go along. Uh, and then there are some other uh, fading options and that you can play around and explore. I'll delete it for now. Um, so now I will show you master pages. So master pages is um, are the pages which are similar to if you have used um, slide master in PowerPoint. So this is very very similar. So basically what happens is whatever I put on my master pages will ap appear on all of the pages that I have created here. So I have my A, ma a master here and to show you if I draw the same rectangular shape in my master and let's say change it to uh, pink again and then if I go into this panel here open. So here's all my pages, my 10 pages that I have set up, and as you see this uh, shape appeared in all of my pages. If I moved around on my master page, it does move around here. So how would we use this? Um, I would, I mean, yeah, if I want to use, uh, just to draw some design elements I want to have on all my pages, so for example if I wanted to have this kind of box, um, let's say on the side of my page, and all my pages where I would put in my, um, let's say some comments or text or something, I'll leave it here. I might want to remove the border just so it's a clean and uh, magenta colored image uh, and as you, see, as you see it showed up on all of these pages here. You will also notice that it showed up only on the left hand side. It's because I am using the setup which is uh, allowing me to create facing pages. Um, this might not be what I want at the moment because I'm creating individual portfolio pages. So I will go into file and document setup which is um, which is the same thing I used at the beginning of my uh, when I s at the beginning when I was starting to set up this document and as you see there's a tick box next to facing pages if I untick it you can actually hit preview so you'll see what happens if you untick it you will see that all my pages suddenly turn into uh, single pages rather than sort of like facing ones and and now this effect here from a master is applied to um, is applied to all of my pages. Uh, and I can obviously change stuff here as well. I can, uh, as long as I don't have any content, I can just reduce it, let's say, to eight pages now, and it will just delete the pages. Or if I want to add or delete pages, I can go into the pages window. Um, let's say I want to insert more pages after my page five. You just hit new page, and you will see that new pages appear. And the same for deleting pages. You just delete them from here. Um, all right. So in my master, I have. Uh, so normally, when I set, set up my document, I don't want to set up just one master, because as I was showing you previously, you can you can have layouts which are slightly different, where, where there is consistency, yet you have um, slightly different objects in your page, or slightly different um, types of ob uh, yeah types of objects, or if you have a full size image versus let's say four si uh, four images on the same page and that kind of stuff. So here I can always create new master. Um, choose your prefix, you can always choose the name, so for example this would be my um, picture with, yeah, let's say picture uh, with text. And you can base it, so if you do based on master A, what it would do is it would take that uh, pink shape I have, I have created here and it would bring it down to master B, so I'll do it now like this. Um, so you can see my picture, my master B has been created, and the little a here means that it it has be it has master A applied. So if I change my master A again and let's say add another shape here, you will see that it appears into master B. If I created one a new master and I said like let's say master C, um, and let's say this would be like a full size image, and I say based on master none. Um, and hit OK, you will see that it creates a master page which is not dependent on any of, of the other pages above. So depending on what you want to do, you can uh, manipulate the settings to fit what you're doing. So now all of my pages have uh, master A applied, so let's say if I do something different in master B, uh, let's just draw another shape now just because it's uh, easier for you to visually see what's happening. So obviously here I have my master B where I have set up stuff with all my pages are master A. So you can either if you only want to apply it to a certain one page, you can drag and drop it onto the page. So for example, if you drag it drop onto the page two, you will see that it has applied the master. And if I go into my page two, 
you will see that it has the layout that uh, I have specified in uh, master B. Whereas if I want just the clear page again, I can use the master C, drag it on here, and it, it applies master C on it. Uh, or you can do it if you have a certain range of pages you want to apply to, you can always um, select the page, then shift select. Um, so I'll show again, you click on a page, then you press shift on your keyboard uh, and click on the last page you want to select and then you just drag and drop it. Okay, that didn't work. Um, okay, I don't know why it didn't work, it used to, <laughs> it used to work. <laughs> Let's do it uh, this way. So you right click on your master and you say um, apply master to pages. So you want to apply to pages, let's say two to six, um, hit enter, and as you can now see, pages two to six all have master B applied, and you can see that also by this little indication of letter B on top. Um, okay, let's let's go into master B, and well, actually, okay, I can leave this here, and I can I can either if I want to get rid of this uh, embedded image from master A, I can either delete master A, or if I only want to remove it from master B, you can con uh, press Control Shift and click onto the object on your page, and this way I can delete it from here. So it will delete it from master B and all the pages where master B has been applied, but master A will stay untouched. Um, also, just for note, I am using a Windows computer, so wherever I say control on a Mac, it would be a command. Uh, just, it's, yeah, if something is not working, make sure that you are um, you're using the right shortcuts for the right uh, operating system that you have. I'll try to make that note, but uh, in case uh, in case I, do, I don't, I apologize, and um, yeah, I'm using a Windows computer. Uh, next thing I will do is I'll set up my. So I will. Let's say I will. I will just uh, apply. I'll use my master B as my main master, uh, and where I can do master options, and I'll just say it's master master. Uh, it's not based on anything, just because it's its own. Uh, it's a master page. And what I will do here is at first I will. I want to set my baseline grid. So. Um, you might want to leave your margins, or maybe you want the page without your margins, depending on how you are laying out your portfolio. You can always go into File, Document, uh, Setup, and you can always just do margins that are... Um, okay, it's not here, sorry. It's... Uh, okay, I'll, I'll cut it out and start again. So if you want to uh, change your margins, you go under Layout, margins and columns, and here you can see the margins have been set to 36 pixels, it's an automatic setup to each um, to my pages. Obviously if I want no margins I can just set it to zero, and if I hit uh, yeah, if I hit preview here is enabled you can see that how it changes, or if I want to make them larger I want them to be 20 pixels wide, um, that, and again you can see preview here. Uh, also if you have a specific number in millimeters that you want to work in, for example if you're working on an if you if it's just more more familiar to you, or if you're working on a let's say A4 um, or A3 or something like that document, and you want to set it in millimeters rather than pixels, you can just type in 20 millimeters, um, and you will see that it does translate 20 millimeters to the pixels on your page here. Uh, so it it takes in different kind of um, measurements. So I'll set it to zero. Actually, no, I'll set it to 20 just to keep some uh, some little margins. Uh, for columns. So the standard is one, so obviously I just have one. Oh, why didn't it set up? Yeah, I have 20 on each. Um, so I have one big column, so obviously I can change it here if I want two or three or four. Uh, or you can do it in a different way, which I'll show you in a second. And the gutter is the um, little gap between the two columns, so you can, if you set it to zero, you will see that um, it's just four. It's just a grid without any gaps in between, or if you want to have gaps, you can add them. And I want, for example, have mine to be a 20, meaning that uh, all my, my margins and my little um, gaps between the columns are the same, so all these columns are exactly the same width, which is important for me, uh, for this portfolio particularly, for example. I hit OK, and I have this grid now here, which is, uh, it's not going to print, but what it allows me to do is now when I want to draw something or line something, InDesign is quite capable of uh, quite cleverly aligning stuff to the grid. So here I draw a shape and it will automatically allow me to um, allow it to stick to the particular uh, margins that I have set. And 
as you see as I move it, uh, as I draw something and I move it along, it sort of automatically provides me types of adjustments. So here it's the same width as the one at the top. Here I can do it right in the middle of the two columns. Um, so here it uh, highlights the middle of the page and it will be, uh, highlight the middle of the page opposite direction. So it's really intuitive in that sense that when you're lining stuff, it's really easy to just um, uh, to just do it and uh, you don't need to worry about stuff sort of like needing to adjust it pixel by pixel in most cases. Uh, you will just see those um, guidelines showing up and it's it's very uh, clever in that sense. Um, another way to add add to grid is if you go under uh, layout and create guides. So it will allow you to set how many rows and columns you want. So you shouldn't have needed to do it the way that I did it previously unless that's what you want. There is no right or wrong in here. And you can set, now I want to set also, let's say four, actually want like five rows for my document um, and it automatically shows you also in the preview how they're going to look and what the, um, and where they're going to be. And obviously you can set more columns if you want as well but it might it might get a bit confusing um, but and obviously you can always just clear everything and uh, and start again. So here also I'm fitting, uh, I'm fitting all my uh, row and column guides to my margins but in case so it, it's gonna be so all these will be the space here will be the same size as the space here and the space here and the space here and sort of like ignoring the gap here whereas if you want you can uh, fit it to the page so it will actually make the distance between the end of the page and this gutter here equal everywhere it just it just depends on your preference really and what you're trying to achieve um, and okay, I'll, I'll hit okay. I'll afterwards delete them because obviously this is not um, very easy to use. And now, if I wanted to add more, um, so for for some reason I wanted to add another layout on top of this because I know that I will have three types of pages, and then some pages I will align stuff to this grid, and then some pages I will um, align stuff to a different grid. I will go in here, and let's say now I want uh, three rows. So you see, it appears here the two uh, separator. Well, where are they now? Uh, sorry, yeah, if I do three, I have the separator here and a separator here. Obviously, it looks like a mess, but maybe what I want to do actually is I have changed my mind and this is my new layout. So you don't need to create a new page on a new document. You just hit removing existing ruler guides. It will remove the ones that it has created um, and you create a new layout here. Uh, as you can see, it's not removing the uh, columns because that is set up in your document setup rather than in your uh, guides. So if you want to remove it here, you would go under File, Document Setup, and uh, oh, sorry, that's the wrong place. If you go under Layout and Margins and Columns, and you just change the column number here, you can change it to zero, um, and now I can set my uh, grids here. Uh, I'll actually change it to something a bit more workable. Oh, sorry, yeah, uh, a bit more workable. So remove the existing ones. I have four, I want maybe five columns, actually I want three, uh, three rows, sorry, and I want to have four columns. And I want my gaps to be 20 pixels wide between all of them. Okay, uh, and also if you are creating another one on top, like if you want to, let's say at the middle of the page margin, um, which you can, uh, so first of all you can just um, go into the layout and ruler guides and it will allow you to change uh, change the color. So if you want to add a new set of rulers on top, I'll, cha I'll choose the color which is for example orange, so it contrasts with the blue, just so it's easier for me to see where stuff is. And then I go layout and create guides and now I just want to split it in, um, in two in both directions and have zeros here. So I just split my page in four and I hit OK and now you can see I have uh, my uh, my ruler set up, uh, sorry, my margin set up and my guide set up and they are easy to see because they're in different colors from the one I have at, th at the back. So if I want to line something, for example, draw into these two shapes, I can easily line it. Or if I want to draw something that is uh, covering a quarter of my page, I can just do it here and it's very easy to see and then obviously it appears in the pages, which is not necessarily what I wanted to do, but I'm just demonstrating the principle behind it. So ho I'm hoping that this is clear. And the last thing 
if you have a certain a specific um, layout in mind and it's not necessarily symmetrical you can just grab your rulers here if you're not seeing them you go under view and uh, it should be under yes yeah, it's, it's hide rulers here so I hide them or if you just go again view and show rulers you show them here and there's obviously a shortcut and now if I want to set a manual grid uh, for myself I can just you click on the ruler and you just drag and it will create guides on your page and uh, if I want to set it at a certain height for example want to set it um, 100 pixels down so here's the X and the Y that obviously you can't move it uh, along the X axis but you can move it along the Y axis so I want it to be exactly 100 pixels um, below my uh, sort of like start of the page top of the page here I hit enter and it will move it and the same on in the other direction I can set my guides to go exactly where I want them to go and if you if you have made a mistake and you don't actually want them there you just select them um, and you delete them so you hit delete on your uh, keyboard to avoid deleting them accidentally um, you can go under view uh, grids and guides and you hit lock guides so this way it will it will lock them and you won't be able to select them and uh, do anything with them so I'm so this is um, so this is the very baseline setup with uh, how to do your um, your guides, your margins, and that kind of stuff. And now we'll move on to actually adding content to your pages. All right. So um, now I'll show you how to add content onto your pages. So first I will fix. Um, I'll just delete this because I don't really need it here. Uh, and also yeah, the thing I didn't say, obviously I'm setting this up as a master page because I want my master page to be applied to most of my, the same grid to be applied to most of my pages. However, if I wanted to, if I have a page, for example, page here, and I only want to um, create some guides for this page because I'm, for example, drawing this complex diagram or I'm adding some elements which require an additional grid. For example, if I'm splitting this, uh, I want to split this one in four. You can always just go do the same, follow the same exact principle. You go under layout and create guides, and here it will just create this particular grid that you have chosen onto this page only. So it's not going to affect any other pages, only the page you're working on. Whereas if you work in a master, it will affect everything on every single page. Um, so what uh, what I'll do now? I'll show you how to um, how to just add stuff so that you're working on. So for example on this page I'll do a layout. Um, I'll add some pictures that I have uh, of the Chatham buildings. So the easiest the easiest way to do to do uh, add stuff to uh, content to your InDesign documents you just drag and drop. So here I have um, here I have let's say a picture of uh, Chatham building. You just drag it onto your InDesign window and you just click and it will drag it in there. Obviously this way it's not. It might be too big or um, too big for the place where you want to put. So, the other way to do it is if I just go Control Z or Command Z on Mac, you go back, and you can actually select where this picture is going to go by clicking into the particular corner, and you just drag it out. Um, so now the picture is nice and contained. And you can do if I delete this and go back, you can do this with multiple files. So, I'll select all the pictures I have here, and I'll go into my InDesign and you can either click as I showed before and just put your pictures in or if you if I just go back you will see that you have this little container next to your mouse and you can actually put them in right places on the page as you go along so I want this picture here then the next picture I want probably uh, on this side of the page um, then I will put this picture somewhere here and this picture will go in here and I have one more picture and let's say I put it here it's not a great layout but um, I'll get I'll get to rearranging it as well um, so what I've done now is I've, I've put my pictures up and obviously they are I can still move them around if I want to um, I'm just laying them out where I want and in terms of dragging content and especially if you have images from the internet like first of all obviously make sure you reference everything that's not your work but also pictures you save sometimes might not be the best 
quality resolution so if you if you're not sure how it's gonna look you can either you can uh, how big the picture is actually gonna be in the page and if it's good enough size for the location you have chosen if instead of like dragging and dropping you just click usually when you click it will drag in the picture in its original resolution so for example this one is a very small one it might not matter because you might have depending on how you set up your pages and what the actual resolution of the image is um, you might it it might be okay but in case you export your files at the end and it seems like something is wrong with it you just check it this way and if it's really really small you might want to find a better a bigger image or just use it in a smaller space rather than like a massive um, poor quality image over your um, pages. Uh, also if you want to preview your page without the margins you just uh, hit W on your keyboard and it will change the layout to the preview mode so it will hide all the uh, guides and all that kind of stuff so you will actually see how the, how the page looks without all the additional stuff on it uh, so like all the unprintable elements and if you want to preview your page in full in full page mode you uh, click shift and W so it's a shortcut to the preview mode so here I'm previewing my page of how it's going to look on uh, on full screen um, and so all of these files they're not actually embedded in InDesign so they are linked they are linked to your location on your computer so and you can see this little link item here so it means there are no problems the files are linked and you can you can work with your document and if you export it it's gonna it's gonna be fine however for example if I go into my folder and I take this document uh, this picture here and I just um, let's say I delete it if I go back into my InDesign you will see there is an error message which is basically saying something is wrong and you can go into your links panel here or if you're not seeing it you just go under view and uh, sort of window and links and you'll see that there is a little error message and if you and you can also see here in the bottom so if you click um, double click on it it will show you what the error is there is a missing link um, so it's, it's basically telling you that this picture it doesn't know where it is anymore so if you export the document this picture will not be there because it's missing uh, so always check this, um, the errors before you export. There might be stuff that has needs to be relinked or stuff that has been um, somehow modified or edited or something like that. Uh, so I'll re, uh, just go back and I'll add these pictures. And you see, the moment I put the picture back in the folder, um, it appears here linked because it's, it's scanning the folder and it's automatically updating it. If in case it isn't, you can always just right go here, right click, and relink, and it will. Um, open the folder and you can choose which choose uh, which file you want to relink it with so that's um, that's the basics of linking stuff also an important thing to note is that if I link for example an illustrator file um, so if I go in all right so if I now link an indesign file uh, sorry an illustrator file which is um, a vector file that I have been working on so it's the same okay it's um, so I link it here um, and I'll just leave this one so it's not repetition of the same document and for example I changed something in it so if I open the same file in Illustrator um, I'll just bring it up here and let's say I changed um, window color to something like yellow and I save it you will see that here you get a little error warning which basically means that it, that it still has the link however it says it's modified so you can either relink it with something else in case this is not the image you want to use anymore or just hit on this triangle here and it will relink it, it will update the link so you, now you can see it's the image with uh, the one I just edited so it's uh, updated uh, and this works for all kinds of files so if I let's say open this JPEG in Photoshop and I edit something to it or change the colors of it or anything like that it will also show the little triangle warning and you can always just double click and relink it, oh sorry just click on it and relink it uh, so I hope that um, that explains how linking works in, uh, in InDesign so next I'll show you what you can do with your uh, images that you have linked. Um, 
as you can see, when you click on it, it highlights with the blue frame and little control points. So this is the actual image frame. So what happens is, if I wanted to uh, so I crop this picture, I would just move the frame, uh, the frame around, and you will see that it crops the image to where I have told it to do. Um, and obviously I can always go back, and if I crop it larger than the images, you will see there's a white gap, because obviously the image doesn't fit, uh, doesn't uh, reach up to that point. And as you hover over it, um, let's make this, so if you hover over it, you will see this so like a gray grayed out uh, button showing up. So what this does is it allows you to actually access the container inside. So you will see that the outline and the little squares changed orange. So in this mode, um, you are actually editing the contents of the frame itself. So for example, if I were to um, make it smaller, you will see that I have made the image small. However, the frame still remains the same size, um, which is for this kind of image, which is um, on both, which I'm just I've just dragged in, it doesn't matter. However, if you have a certain type of frame and then you want, so for example, if I had the frame which is square, which I'll actually show you now, um, the other way of uh, controlling your your document is if you have a created frame and then you want the image to fit inside of it um, in a certain way, that is where these controls become uh, important and useful. So I will create. Uh, all right, so. I will actually delete all of this stuff here for now. So you can delete things, um, you just select what you want to delete and you just hit delete on your keyboard. And um, in this instance what I want to do, I actually have a setup space for my drawing, uh, sorry, for my uh, page and I want to set up where each image goes in a certain type of frame. So for example here, if I if I want to only do it on this page, so I can do it with my master as well, if I want all my pages to have images like that. So for example, I'll do uh, I'll do a, s a round frame for my uh, for my images, so it's in the tool tools panels, you just choose the uh, uh, frame tool rather than the drawing tool, so there's a slight difference. You can always um, switch them around, but if you, are, if you want a specific image frame, just choose the image frames. And you will see it if you draw it, uh, it will show up as with a little square, sort of square with a cross on it. So you will see that that is um, that is a, f uh, an, a container or a frame rather than an object. And the uh, cross means it's basically empty, that there's nothing in it. So now I'll draw it again, but I'll just draw it. Um, I'll draw it as um, as a circle. So. I'll start in this corner, and if I hold hold down Shift, it will make sure that it is um, the proportion. It con constrains the proportion, uh, the width and the height of it. So I'm drawing a perfect circle rather than drawing um, just a preform ellipse shape. And if I want to, and you can see it's sort of like starting drawing it from the corner, and I just drag it out as much as I want. Uh, the other option to draw it is if I want to draw it from the center. So if I, s if I do the same, I start drawing it and I, I hit shift, but I also uh, press alt or option key on your Mac, you will see that I'm actually drawing it from the center, so I'm controlling how far it goes. Um, and let's say I'll draw a couple more. And yeah, as you, if you just click in uh, onto your page, it will ask you um, what type of ellipse you want. So let's say if I want to make it 100 pixels wide and 100 pixels um, tall, I hit in, I uh, type in 100 by 100, I hit OK, and it will create this shape here. Uh, and if I want to make it bigger, you you just um, go to your select selection tool and you press down Shift if you want it uh, constrained. And as you can see here, um, as I stretch it, it actually shows me those green arrows, which shows me when it's the same height and width as the other one, it, and it makes the lining stuff and making stuff um, matching and sort of like uh, the same size on your page very very easy. So now I have these three frames um, and I want to go back to my folder with my images and I'll just um, I'll drag them in here so I have the same so I have basically the same images I was showing before and instead of just dragging it on the page I will drag it onto the frame so what happens is it just drops my pictures straight into the frame and I'll drag this one as well um, 
so now what you can see what has happened is so this one is probably looking fine but maybe I want to adjust it a little bit um, uh, so it shows actually more of the top of the building so you can hit the um, in the middle the gray button and it, you can see it highlights with the um, orange outline so this is actually controlling the content and I can now move it around inside this frame um, the way I want I can scale it down slightly so I get more in the inside the frame and obviously this is great for when you want when you have different size and different uh, aspect ratio pictures you can easily control them and uh, put them into any kind of frames and so this one actually wants to stretch slightly bigger, which might not be a good idea because it might mean that uh, it's a bit blurry, but just for the purpose of this exercise. And whereas this one is way too big, so I just want to stretch it down. And also here, um, especially important with the images, is that you uh, hold down Shift key, because that will constrain these directions in, um, in both width and height, so you don't end up with your image being uh, accidentally squeezed or sort of like stretched in a weird, uh, weird proportion. And if I press Alt or Option key, it scales it um, from the center rather than from the corner. And I just put it back in, and maybe I want to do it again. So this is um, how to do your your image um, image frames. And obviously, you can always just do it with the square rectangular shapes as well. It's the same thing, and you just um, drag and drop things into those frames. Um, yeah, one thing I want to show you is if you have instead of setting up your image frames onto your page, you have set them up inside your master pages. Uh, so for example, I have I have a frame set up here on my master page. Um, so it will show up in all of, all of my pages, page two, three, four, all the pages that have uh, master be applied. If I go into page two, uh, okay, I'll show you page three because it's less busy. You will see that if I try to drop um, I try to drop an image inside of it. It it won't um, it won't react because it's it is sort of like embedded in the master, which is uh, okay, it's, which is not quite what I want. So in order to activate stuff that is embedded in the master, you uh, press Control and Shift or Command and Shift on the Mac, and you click onto the object, and this will make it active on this particular page. So now I can either move it around or I can just uh, drag and drop my image into it and you will see that it, it works. Um, so I'm hoping that this, this explains of how to manipulate the image frames and uh, and different shapes and, uh, and that kind of stuff. And obviously you can also add, um, it works the same way as any sort of like shape would work. So it does have actually a frame. So you can add frame color, which for example, I'll just do bright pink so it's uh, like a magenta color so it's noticeable and I'll make it quite white so you can see it adds this um, outline of your of your image quite easily um, and if I hit W I can preview my page so this is how it's going to look uh, so now I'll move on to uh, text setups uh, in your document